Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where skincare is all about progression over perfection because perfection doesn't exist. And welcome back to another episode of Instagram vs Reality where I merge my life as an influencer with my actual degree in editorial and advertising photography to kind of break down the tricks, the lies, the techniques that are being used in advertising to sell us cosmetics, products, gym wear, diet supplements, gym memberships, and even workout DVDs and videos. Does anybody Anybody watch DVDs anymore? I don't think so. Quick warning before we get into today's topic, I'm gonna to be talking about body dysmorphia, eating disorders, body size, all that kind of stuff. So if you find any of this triggering, please skip this video and maybe watch my When Beauty Turns Ugly series instead. We've looked at beauty campaigns, fashion campaigns, influencer campaigns that use filters and post-production to basically lie to us about the results of a product. And whether that be a professional retouching job or just the skin filter on TikTok. But in my personal opinion, one of the um, one of the biggest businesses that has the best examples of fake results, lighting, trickery, digital retouching, is actually the health and fitness business that I'm not overly familiar with. <laughs> this industry that is all about per perfecting your body, the shape of your body, in my opinion, uses more trickery than the fashion and beauty business. First of all, we've all seen those videos of um, influencers posing in certain ways to show, hey, look, when I pose like this, I look like a model. When I pose like this, I look like an average everyday person. Showing just how much the position of your body and even the position of your workout gear can change the way you look. But it goes much deeper than just how the model is posing. And today I want to expose some of those, that some of those secrets Let's start with a very simple, simple one, then get into the rabbit hole. I've known about these tricks for a long time, right? But I finally decided to make this video when I was tagged in this video over on Instagram. <laughs> this video shows what to me looks like a photo shoot for athletics wear, af athleisure, I don't know what the word is, where they are using bum pads to make the model's bum bum look more curvaceous and toned. Now the lady reacting to this video and people in the comments were really quite shocked about this and to be honest I wasn't. Um, I, <laughs> after getting my photography degree I became a stylist and personal shopper and you know your stuffing everywhere, bras, underwear, shoulders, you're pinning in everywhere. So I know these, these kind of things happen because you just do whatever you can to make the product look its best on the model. But what I'm saying here is this is normal. It's not right, but it's normal. It happens more than you would think. And this is what is done when you look at fitness campaigns, fitness wear, gym wear. If some of it's not done with padding, then it's done in post-production. Sometimes it's not. Most of the time it is. But there are many, many other points of trickery that goes into a fitness shoot alone. The next point, and there's a lot of points we're discussing today, is gonna to be about lighting. I'm br I very briefly mentioned on this channel that I now use a studio setup because I feel like it, it shows my skin more um, than natural lighting. I feel like natural lighting is a very nice filter, whereas I got you know, dedicated lights showing all the light on my face. You can see redness um, when I got rosacea flare. You can see all the pores on my forehead. Lighting can make something look completely different. Have you ever looked at fitness photography and thought, why does it all look the same? It's got like that grayish background, right? The models are kind of like a little bit orange, overly sharpened, harsh lighting, huge contrast between the shadows and the highlights. I have, I look at them all the time and I think this is literally the same thing over and over and over. And that is because, however, whilst there are many ways to light a fitness shoot or a fitness model in particular, from what I see, there are two very, very popular lighting techniques to show off and enhance every muscle, every inch of muscle on the model's body. One of the most popular examples that I notice is this. As you can see, there's like, kind of like this halo effect around the model but also shadow at the same time. This is basically two lights opposite each other. And the model is usually backlit with um, with a light, like a tungsten light or natural lighting. So you've got this backlighting that creates like this halo effect. And this kind of like exaggerates the curves of the model. But most importantly, often you have like two lights opposite each other, right? So say I was the model, you've got light here and a light here further away, um, usually done like a flash. Speed lights, right? So when the camera flash flashes, those lights flash as well. So you get this burst of light that lights up your image. Quick editing note, I was trying to find pictures to match what I meant and actually came across this video by this photographer and videographer who unsurprisingly explains this perfectly and even shows a setup. So I'll put in his pictures here. You can find his channel in the link down below. It shows off all the highlights of the body but also creates this shadow 
<laughs> you can tell I haven't done photography for such a long time. I find this so hard to explain. But what this does is kind of, again, shows up every inch of that body. It really exaggerates those shadows and really highlights those highlights. This just makes every single muscle pop out. Muscles that you didn't even know existed. For me, this is the a perfect example of this, is me filming my skin with a torch versus two giant softbox, you know? You're gonna get one that shows every kind of inch of detail and then the other form of lighting is gonna smooth out your skin and make you look pretty much poreless. The other lighting that you see, not only just in these campaigns, fitness campaigns, all that kind of stuff, but even in your own gym and sometimes even in the locker room is lighting from above. Very standard lighting, right? But often this is done again to create those harsh shadows. So if you're lighting from above, you can see I got very even lighting here. So I'm lighting all under my chin. It's all even here. If I was just lighting from above, you'd get shadows under every kind of thing, right? So whilst not great for beauty, what this is gonna do, this will chisel out my chin. If, if I had pepped it would chisel, chisel under them as well. So again, exaggerating those muscles, making all those dips in the body look dippier and deeper. It's like contouring with shadows, right? Two very basic and popular lighting tricks that actually just exaggerate more than just what's already there. But the scariest thing when it comes to photo shoots, these fitness photo shoots, in my opinions, is what the models do to themselves before the shoot. Now, I found this video from RGL Filmhouse where they talked to Ben, whose dream it was to be a fitness model, and he explains what people would do before the shoot in order to make themselves as lean as possible. And honestly, it sounds like torture on the body. My goal was to be on the front cover of a fitness magazine. I remember looking through magazines thinking, fucking hell, I want to look like that. That's insane. Going into photo shoots, there's a, a bit of a routine. So a lot of people used to do things like drink alcohol before a photo shoot, hoping it would dehydrate them. A lot of top people would take like prescription diuretics going into photo shoots, despite the risks involved with that. I was in a sauna. Um, one of the top bodybuilders I knew told me that he once tried to spend eight hours a day in a sauna leading up to a photo shoot. At my leanest, I was hungry all the time. And when I say all the time, I mean I'd finish dinner and I would tap my fingers on the table because I was so hungry that I still wanted to keep eating. On a photo shoot day, I would be in a gym for say three hours. Um, there would be reflectors at certain angles, often multiple flashes. You'd have to stand in a very specific part of the gym to get the best light. I think in a lot of our minds we have this very set idea of what an eating disorder and body dysmorphia looks like. I don't know about you, but to me it it's not muscly people, gym goers who look very, very healthy, look very, very healthy. But a lot of these people are purposely doing damage to themselves to look the healthiest they've ever been, to look like the peak of fitness. In fact, in my research for this video, I found um, so many articles and blog posts talking about what you should do days, weeks, even months before a fitness photo shoot. All this build up, all this stuff you're doing to your body for nine hours absolute maximum in a day. And it sounds miserable. It sounds absolutely miserable and really, really bad for you. Ben also mentions about the digital retouching side of the shoots that he did. Shot with a photographer who, when we finished the photo shoot, he sent me across the photos and I was like, I can't use them. What do you mean you can't use them? Well, that doesn't look like me. Like, what have you done? And like, he honestly, I think he made me look 30% bigger. And when I said, that, but that doesn't look like me, he genuinely said, I do this with every model that I shoot. He's like, if I submit a photo to one of the big media magazines, they will email back saying, can you make the guy's shoulders bigger? Can you make the waist smaller? Can you make his thighs wider? I get that you play with lighting and contrast and stuff, but when you get to the point where you're distorting body parts, it's not really surprising that people have got like a fucked up body image. I didn't realize how much photo manipulation goes into photos. Like when I saw photos of me that were fully edited, and you saw just a photo that if I'd taken like a selfie or something and you put them side by side, they, they don't look even fucking similar. Like you could take the head off both. You wouldn't even know it's the same person. So Photoshop, I can guarantee is always use, always use, whether it's just adjusting lighting, color balance, or changing the way a model looks. We actually have another story from a guy called Jason Helms, who is a uh, personal trainer, who writes about his fitness photo shoot experience over on his blog, anymanfitness.com. He explains how he always wanted to do a fitness shoot, right? I, I, fair enough, like, you spend ages in the gym working on how you want your body to look, document it, why not? He mentions that he was the leanest he's ever been and that he was coming to the end of a cut. I don't know what that is, but I think that's when people cut out, like, anything bad? 
so they lose weight, but I don't know. I don't know, I don't do gym. But he's also a personal trainer, so a fitness photo shoot makes sense for his business. He could have some pictures for his website, etc. He was actually on holiday with his family and a photographer was able to come along, take some really cute shots of him and his family, as well as him just like generally posing, flexing, showing off. These are the finished pictures, but the one major issue is that they didn't actually look like him. He said he liked what he saw, but it just wasn't him. Let's take a look at this picture, for example. Here he is in the sea, muscly and stuff. Yeah, here he is just three days later. And from the side, same man, same week. Now, you may think this is literally his head stuck on, on, on a model's body. This can't actually be the same man. There's such a huge difference in the before and after. But no, this is the result of a few things. I'm gonna read here, he said, a grueling training schedule, dehydrating the body and the right lighting, and above all, the right posing and flexing. He goes on to say that the condition of his body at this moment in time was the worst it's ever been. It's not a condition that you can safely attain long term. He was not healthy and he actually says that he was grumpy as hell during this family holiday. These reality pictures of him are a result of him instantly going back to his normal attainable lifestyle and diet. He says that he had to dehydrate himself and eat next to nothing for 24 hours in order to dry out. And then actually all it took was an hour for him to get back into his normal state. He says he can't look like that full time, at least not if he actually wanted to be healthy. He says he used to idolize fitness coaches. He would look at their pictures and yearned to look like that, that kind of like superhero physique. And he says, ironically, now that he is a fitness coach, he is happier with his body as a constant work in progress, and he doesn't need validation of these pictures. And I think that's a really nice, cool thing to hear, especially as him being a personal trainer, that he can pass on this philosophy. Um, this progression over perfection mentality onto his clients. So speaking of Photoshop, let me show you a few things that I've noticed. So I've taken this stock image of this guy here, fitness model, obviously very much in shape, but there are a few things that um, I've noticed they always do. So the first thing would be to play around with the levels. You wanna get that real contrast in the image. And what this does is not only makes them look a little bit more tanned, but they, they also have like this orange tinge to them, right? But it also just exaggerates again, the highlights and the shadows. The other thing that they tend to do is this high pass in Photoshop. And it's really, I find this difficult to explain, but what, what you're basically doing is sharpening up the image it high pass kind of makes the image completely gray and what you get is like the edges and the outlines of you know, the body veins the six pack the pectorals in this image and then you overlay that over the image and everything stands out like a hundred times more it looks super sharpened and again this is another technique another thing i see used all the time especially with men like looking angry and lifting weights, it looks like their veins are about to pop out <laughs> and it's kind of achieved by using this. Of course, the next step would be to make the muscles look bigger and that is done with a really simple liquify tool. Everybody does this in Facetune. But even just these subtle changes, we're not going for anything crazy. We're going from the video where Ben was talking about what they did to him, we slimmed in the waist, we made the shoulders bigger, we made the biceps a bit bigger as well. This image has a weird cut out around the body, so they've already cut out his neck a bit weird, but we've changed these, whatever these are called, I don't know, neck round lines. <laughs> We made those bigger too. And then we've gone with a burn and dodge tool, again, to highlight the highlights and darken the shadows, just making everything look bigger, like it's popping out more, like it's more voluptuous, adding kind of more depth to the image. Really simple to do. But this can be done on selfies as well. I've actually got a picture of my friend Scott here who is a trainer at Rebel One. You can check his Instagram down below if you want to go to any classes. But this is just an iPhone selfie. And as you can see, I can do the exact same thing. But this was done on Facetune, just like these ones here, still so super easy and pretty effective. Let's finish on what I think has to be one of the biggest scams in fitness. Well, actually there's loads, but this one is particularly interesting because it's just the lying, the the actual lying. And we're gonna talk about celebrity workout DVDs in particular, but any kind of fitness program. I feel like we've all seen them or watched them before. A celebrity has very pub publicly lost a lot of weight and just so happens to have a workout DVD coming out next week. You put on the DVD, it's 30 minutes of them like stepping backwards and forwards you know, doing a few stretches, doing the absolute bare minimum, but somehow they've lost all this weight following this fitness routine. Or so we're told. But really, supposedly, 
it's just a lie. Let's take, for example, Scarlett Moffat, a UK celebrity who I absolutely love, actually, who launched her fitness DVD back in 2016. The DVD, The Fitness Regime, claims that she went from a size 18 to a size 18 eight with this plan and on a 1,200 calorie diet a day. However, this was exposed as allegedly being a lie simply to sell this workout. It's speculated that to make this DVD to earn money from this deal, she was shipped off to a very popular and notoriously grueling boot camp in Switzerland. Here, the attendees work out for six hours a day whilst only having a 700 calorie a day diet. And this is the same for a few other reality star celebrities DVDs where they had to all attend these kind of boot camps as well. It's actually within their contracts to have to keep off this weight for at least a year of the release of their DVD. But the drastic measures they go to to get this before and after, which is the selling point of the DVD. It's the lies, the absolute lies. So apparently we were all being, I didn't buy this, but we were all being sold fake results of a fake workout routine. Honestly, it doesn't surprise me at all. It's like when celebrities come out with skincare lines and pretend that they don't have a dermatologist on speed dial or that they've never had any treatments done. You know, it's the same kind of deal. It's strange because after being asked about these fitness DVDs and the rumors and what they had to go through to lose all this weight, all these celebrities say that they are so much happier now, now that they found what they consider a perfect middle ground between the grueling boot camp style workouts, not being able to eat, and the kind of just like generally healthy lifestyle making better choices. And I wish that's what they talk about more. Like, but I guess it doesn't make money, right? If someone's gonna sit there saying how you just have to have a, a healthy lifestyle, it's not gonna sell anything. I know I never pay attention to it, but I wish they'd talk about that more. You can watch the rest of the Instagram versus reality series here and some general light entertainment here, and I'll see you over there.